This what makes you a man. False. That's not what makes you a man. Boys have fists too. This is what makes you a man. Because boys don't know how to use this. We're not in that full capacity. Welcome back to the channel. I am Kwame Mega Man from Chicago Land. And today, again, we are discussing the misconceptions of manhood. The truth is, despite the fact that I've already done a video on this subject, it'll probably take dozens of videos to really dispel the myths and the misconceptions of what manhood really is. Because there's been so much propaganda and so much indoctrination across multiple generations that old men and young men alike both need massive deprogramming. When I was growing up, this was all the protection we needed. You win some, you lose some. But you live, you live to fight another day. That's a very idealistic way of looking at things. Unfortunately, everyone isn't so lucky to be able to fight and to live another day after they fight. The thing about it is, when you fight, you never know what the outcome will be. You could get fatally injured just from a, a blow to the head. You could fatally injure your opponent just from a blow to the head. Or even worse, your opponent might bring a weapon to the fight and might use that weapon to take your life. Such was the case with Manuel Portis Jr. Rest in peace to him. An 18 year old young man out of Schaumburg, Illinois, which is a suburb to the northwest of Chicago. He agreed to fight another young man, it was a 17 year old young man. And that 17 year old young man, in cowardly fashion, took Manuel's life in a very, very brutal way. Let's check out the news story and then we'll come back and discuss it further. The family of an 18 year old man from Elgin is disappointed that a murder charge won't be brought by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office in the death of their son. The killing happened in Northwest suburban Schaumburg and it was recorded on a cell phone. We get more on the story now from WGN's Kelly Davis. The victim's family is fighting for justice. They met with the state's attorney today to ask why the suspect in this case has not been charged with murder. I don't wish this on nobody. Now my worst is in to lose a son. Manuel Portis says his son, who was named after him, was a good kid. He messed, messed up like other kids do, you know, make teenage mistakes, but he didn't deserve this. His decision to agree to fight somebody was one of those teenage mistakes. But unfortunately, in his case, it was the most costly mistake he could have made. 18-year-old Manuel Portis Jr. was stabbed to death during a fight Tuesday night. It happened around 6 p.m. in front of a house on Sternbridge Lane near Newberry in Schaumburg. The guy that did this to my son, he's a coward. He was scared. And he brought a knife to a fight where my son didn't have no weapon. Family tells me the two teens met for a one-on-one -on -one fight, and someone recorded it on their cell phone. Come on, man, come on. Portis is punched in the face and falls to the ground. This is where we pause that video. It then shows the suspect stab Portis in the neck as he's lying there. They're saying that it's mutual combat. How is it mutual combat when my son didn't have a, anything to come back with? Only thing he had was his two hands. The 17 year old suspect is charged with misdemeanor unlawful use of a weapon. And then he stood over my son and finished him. And that's not murder. Schomburg police say they presented the case to the Cook County State's Attorney who authorizes charges. Portis's family met with them to demand justice. This is no way that this young man should continue to live his life and my son is gone. I reached out to the attorney's office for comment. A spokesperson says, quote, they determined that the evidence was insufficient to meet their burden of proof needed for murder charges. In Rolling Meadows, I'm Kelly Davis, WGN News. Thank you, Kelly. Now, I can definitely sympathize with what the father is going through right here. But we have to use moments like these as teachable moments to instruct other young men on what not to do. Meeting up to go fight somebody, having a scheduled fight is an extremely foolish and immature thing to do. You, me, talk a lot after school. First of all, from the time that you got into that initial 
interaction, that initial argument, that initial conflict that led to you agreeing to meet somebody later to fight them, by that time, cooler heads should have already prevailed. But another problem in this entire equation are those people who were filming with their cell phones. Yeah, those people were most likely instigators as well. Pretty much miniature Don Kings promoting a fight that they weren't even getting paid for. A fight that a young man paid with his life. Now, I'm not trying to act like I'm better than anybody or that I'm some type of saint. You know, I've definitely made foolish teenage mistakes in my youth. And while I'm very, very grateful that I was fortunate enough to walk away from scheduled fights that I participated in unscathed, I still have to recognize the foolishness of it all. One time I was in high school, I was a sophomore. There was a senior that was in a relationship with a girl who I was interested in. So in proper simp fashion, I allowed somebody who I thought was a friend and one of his homies to instigate a fight between us. But not to avoid any accountability, like I said, in proper simp fashion, I was looking for any reason to fight this dude because I was in my feelings about who he was with and who I was not with. So yeah, in proper simp fashion, I challenged him to a fight days and days and days out. Like it was like two weeks, which is absolutely stupid. And two weeks later, him and his homie show up to my crib to fight. My supposed homie did not show up. So really, they could have jumped me if they really wanted to. Luckily, they didn't. Luckily, we were still able to shoot the fair one. Although, really, there should have been no fight. There should have been no fair one, you know? Cooler head should have prevailed. Should have been like, what the hell are you doing? Two weeks, from what, what? You know? If you're gonna fight somebody, it should be on the spot and only in self-defense. You should be fighting somebody when there's an imminent threat. So, long story short, I ended up winning the fight and I was proud because I beat this senior while I was a sophomore in high school, a dude that was taller than me and way more than me. And um, I remember, because my dad was out of town during the fight, so when my dad came back in town, I remember bragging to my pops about it, like, yo, dad, you won't believe it. I, I won this fight, I beat up this senior. I broke his nose, yada, yada, yada. I'm sure my dad was like, man, this my son's a goddamn liability. He's gonna get me sued. But now, nah, like, all jokes aside, he was ashamed. And I was just thinking, like, why would my pops be ashamed? Why would my pops be proud of me? You know, my pops, this should be a, a proud father moment, right? And nah, my dad wasn't proud. My dad was ashamed because his son was out here being a buffoon. His son was out here acting like a barbarian, contrary to an Osarian. Come on, put up your dukes. Now you're a man. Nope. You have to think, young brother, about your future. Now you're a man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the topic. Hop in the comments. Hit the like button. Share, subscribe if you aren't already subbed to the channel. Or hit the dislike button <laughs> if you feel so inclined. If you dislike the commentary it's all love in any event engage with me interact with me hop in the comments let me know what you think about the topic peace and love Kwame Gamera from Chicagoland signing out